Um, after I got through with, you know, the big cutter or the big cylinder that I was using, as you can see, it leaves a lot of um, untouched material, which in turn leaves a trench. So as I told you, the next thing I do, I switch to a smaller cylinder. Now even this isn't going to get it all. But what I can do with this is take out the rough, uneven marks that is made by this big cylinder because this thing is a butcher hog. And it'll really cut the raw material out, but it'll leave waves and ridges. And remember, ruffles have ridges. Cylinder heads don't. So, by going in there with this smaller cutter, and if you'll notice how the valve has got I've got a bunch of different diameter valves that have this mushroom top head. That's where the grinder lays in there. And this one is just the shape that I need that goes in here and allows me to hit it without going past the edge. That's one of my tricks. Because you don't ever want to go. I stay on the inside of that combustion chamber line. I can't tell you how imperative that is that you do it. So why don't we take a gander here and see, let me show what I'm talking about. The first thing I do is hit this edge here. From this angle, see how I'm kind of pulling it down? I'm actually digging into the quench pad, guys, so that you know. I'm trying to give it a nice little pass, then I'll come up, then I'll start up here with a straight down to where I'm letting that radius of the nose kind of dig in. Then once I get that right there, I'll take and say, okay, now that's got some kind of a little ridge or a trench. I'll come in here and start working on the side to try to bring it off. And pull it right up into the top where it's layered. Now, after I get through with that cylinder, I'll have to come in here one more time with something that... <laughs> it's got kind of a point to it. I'll go to a baby flame that's got an even pointed nose and I'll touch that little area right there and pull it in and then that's as far with the cutters as you can go. After that, I'll either switch to a sand roll or a stone with a fine point and just touch it and pull it right into the edge of that valve. So, man, as soon as that 30 degree valve angle comes in, it's going to go kaboom, roll right off into that and just ricochet right off the chamber wall. And what a difference it makes. Once again, I'll make the bold statement. If you gave me a choice of what modification, and of course it would depend on the head, how unshrouded it was. But let's just say in general, 85% of the heads. If you gave me one area to attack, and that was the only area that I was allowed to go in there and modify, I would pick the chamber first. Because no matter what you do to the rest of the port, if the chamber is too shrouded, then you can't get there into the board to hell with it. Alright, so anyway, let's go on on this 241 project and uh, get this chamber blended. I will show you how I touch that one piece. And then we'll get into some more serious meat removal because I'm fixing to make mincemeat out of these bowls. An incredible amount of material has to be taken out of that bowl to bring it from a 206 valve all the way up to a 2250. It's just enormous. So anyway, on with the next spot. The final part of the combustion chamber mod, what we're going to do is we're going to go in there with an egg and we're going to do a sweep starting from the spark plug back. And we're going to go to a pretty big egg here, about a 9 sixteenths or bigger. And I'm going to go in here and typically what I do is I start up in here and I'm going to pull down this way to take the hump out of it.
Notice how I went up there and just kissed off in the trench area just so that it forms a blend and I'm not pushing down too hard but yet I'm pulling the swoop out of it and then you just got to stand back and look and try to eyeball level what it is next to the other combustion chamber. Because this is an area here that when the valve's coming up, it needs this release. And if you've got a hump here, even though you've got it unshrouded here, it's not going to let it go into the bore at the angle it needs to to keep the fuel atomized with it as it goes around. And that's the part standing back here and just kind of eyeballing. Then taking your finger and forming that and seeing, making sure that you got the same lay in that the other chambers do. that right there probably is about got where we need to be with that so we'll stop at that let's get a little bit closer look see how laid back it is now across the hump that's what you're looking for okay so pretty much I'm done with a combustion chamber I'm not going to do no polishing or blending uh, economical thing and y'all know how I feel about that anyway so next step will be to open up the bowls to get ready for the valve job now that the chambers are laid in and I've got it set up to receive the big 2 250 valve, now we got to let it take the 2 250 valve. I want to show you something here. I'm going to back up just a second. This is the 188 exhaust valve. Here's a bowl that's semi-done that I've already butcher hogged with my cutter I'm going to show you I use. Now keep in mind it's not done yet. There's touch-up work getting it round and equal in relation to the guide on all points. But, and this right here isn't done, but watch what happens. I can get that 188 almost to the bottom. Now, I have cutaway valves that I use, and in order to keep it round, you can actually put this in there and use this as a guide bringing it down and you can see daylight coming around that lets you know you're not getting the bowl as round as what it needs to be here's an untouched bowl other than the casting flash removed look at that that 188 you couldn't make it fit in there unless you beat it with a hammer boom so that right there is just showing you the difference but now let me show you my tool of choice for really chopping this out. This is one of my favorite tools in my array. This is a giant um, 11 sixteenths egg. Okay, I mean, excuse me, a flame. Double cross cut. Now this will get you in deep trouble, but it absolutely will make mincemeat out of them bowls. I'm gonna show you how powerful that this one burr is and how hard it cuts. Let's give her a spin around the block here real quick. Now what I do is I'll grab a hold of my grinder with a lot of force and I go slow. I, don't, I make the first cut slow because it really digs. Let me see if I can get you in a little bit closer. Alright, let's see what we got. Well, I'm going, I'm just pulling it, letting it dig. 
What this does that makes it so awesome for this particular bowl is the taper. Notice how you got the, the, the belly sticking out then coming back. When you lay it perfectly straight and let it rest on the highest part, which is the last angle where it goes into the bowl where the factory cut is, and you put that down, it's already forming a perfectly round bowl and you're using this right here, you're, you're applying pressure in a straight forward to back. You're not putting it down there. But it, it's a technique that just takes a lot of practice, you guys. I'd recommend if you're going to get a, a burr this big, if you can find somebody to sell it, because a lot of these companies won't sell them that big. If you find them like that, you want to have practice, because buddy, it will sure bust through cast iron. I mean, you won't believe how quick it'll get you into trouble. So I just wanted to show you, and then I'll take, once I get that initial cut, then I start the, a medium pressured feathering. Going back. Then you can bring it to a point like what I'm doing and feather it and pull it in. But this right here sure does take the meat out of the initial cut of the bowls. Like I said, it's one of my favorite tools. It's just absolutely awesome. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead, butcher all the bowls, get the raw material removed, and I'll show you how it works on the short term, too. It's really good on that. And... Uh, then we'll come back and a lot of time here now on the bowls because this is the main trick on this oval port head is it uses a gigantic bowl with a medium sized port so that it does a good cylinder pack uh, from about 25 to 65 and 6500 that's it there's just no more left actually probably closer to 63 or 64 but hey, on the street with 454 inches, what more could you ask for? This just, it'll walk all over a rectangle port head at that, at that RPM. All right.